Hi everyone, I am Dr. Silvokumar. Now in this video, we are going to see a very important concept regarding colloid oncotic pressure and hydrostatic pressure. This is a very important concept which has many clinical implications and also in almost every alternate year, either in NEET or in INISET, a question is asked from this topic. So let's go into the topic. At the end of this video, I am sure you will be able to understand about the recent begin edema, how kidney GFR works, how does manital works. Basically, there are two important pressure uh, in our body. Uh, they are oncotic pressure which is indicated by the symbol pi which is also known as colloid oncotic pressure because uh, these are uh, governed by the colloid pro proteins which are albumin, globulin and fibrogen and hydrostatic pressure which is indicated by the symbol P. It is a type of fluid pressure occurs due to the fluids like plasma in the blood. Now how this pressure influences fluid movement? I will give you an easy trick to remember this. For colloid oncotic pressure note the letter C collects water or fluid towards itself. For hydrostatic pressure, which is indicated by the symbol P, P for pushes the water or fluid away from them. So, now these two pressure exist in two areas. One is in blood vessels, that is in capillary, and second is in interstitium. These are indicated by the symbols Pi C, which means colloid oncotic pressure on the capillary, Pi I, which means colloid oncotic pressure in the interstitium, P C, which means hydrostatic pressure in the capillary, PI, which means hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium. Now, as I said earlier, pi C, that is colloid osmotic pressure of the capillary, it collects water towards itself. So, water from the interstitium goes into the capillary. Similarly, pi I, that is colloid osmotic pressure of the interstitium, uh, it causes the water from the cap to go into the interstitium. Similarly, PC, which is hydrostatic pressure of the capillary, pushes the water to the interstitium, that is away from it. And PI, similarly, it also pushes the water away from it, that is from interstitium to the capillary. Okay, now guys, I hope you understand how this pressure works. Now imagine you are a medical officer in an PHC. Now a patient comes with a nephrotic syndrome or a patient with liver cirrhosis or a protein malabsorption. A future common to all these three are there is a loss of proteins. In nephrotic syndrome, the albumin leaks from the glomerular capillaries into the urine. In liver cirrhosis, there is decreased albumin synthesis. In my protein mole absorption, there is decreased absorption of protein. So, ultimately, there is no protein in our body. No protein or very less protein in our body. So, as a end result, there is less amount of fluid that will be absorbed into the capillaries. In the other words, we can say more amount of fluid stays in the interstitium, which causes edema. Now, coming to the next uh, clinical implication uh, about manitol. Usually, we give manitol to conditions like brain edema, example in case of malignancy, or in acute congestive glaucoma where there is an increased intraocular pressure in the eye. How does manitol act? It, it is, manitol is a uh, colloid substance. Uh, it increases the capillary oncotic pressure that is pi C. Uh, so increased fluid from the interstitium will go into the blood vessels. So there will be a decrease in edema and decrease in IOP. Just have a look at this clinical scenario. A 56 year old male met with an RTA was brought to the casualty. On examination, he was unconscious. CT scan reveals edematous brain parenchyma with an hemorrhagic foci. Your co-intern suggests you to give manitol. What will you do? One option is give manitol. Wait and watch. Do not give a manitol. Give Altiplace IV 0.9 mg per kg. If we have chosen give, give manitol, it's a wrong answer. Because there is a history of hemorrhagic foci, which is an absolute contraindication for manitol. I will explain uh, this with, with this diagram. Now consider this is a blood vessel in the brain and the brain is full of edema. Now while giving manitol, there is increased uh, uh, increase in pi C that is colloid oncotic pressure of the capillary. So more fluid from the interstitium that is brain in this case will enter into the capillary. As a result of this, the edema of the brain reduces and patient will get better. But a patient with hemorrhagic foci, there will be a breach in capillary. So the manitol you are giving through an IV line will es escape through the capillary and enter into the brain parenchyma. As a result, it will cause an increase in uh, colloid oncotic pressure of the interstitium, that is pi i. So, uh, further, it increases the brain ed edema of the brain because uh, increase in pi i uh, uh, takes more fluid from the capillaries into the brain. So, as a result, the brain can herniate and can even result in death of the patient. So, we should not give manitol uh, if, if there is an history of hemorrhagic foci in the brain. Other options are, we, don't, we do not wait, wait and watch. We, since, Multiplace is contraindicated in hemorrhagic strokes. It's only in, uh, useful in embolic stroke. Now coming to GFR, uh, in kidney, the glomerular filtration rate is governed by these pressures. 
these are known as starling formulas or starling forces in the kidney so a problem based question is frequently asked from this starling forces remember this is not a starling law which are usually seen in ventricles this is starling forces so the formula comes like this net filtration that is gfr is equal to filtration pressure minus absorb absorptive pressure filtration pressure indicates the pressure which causes the fluid from the capillary to go into the uh, interstitium so these are uh, pc that is hydrostatic pressure of capillary which pushes the water out and pi i that is uh, a colloid oncotic pressure of the interstitium which, which, uh, which collects the water from the uh, capillaries to the interstitium minus absorptive pressure uh, these are the forces which causes the fluid to come into the capillaries uh, these are pi c that is colloid oncotic pressure of the capillaries and uh, pi that is hydrostatic pressure of the interstitium which pushes the fluid from the interstitium to the capillaries so if you substitute all these value you will be getting an answer usually all these value will be given in the questions and you have to just substitute the value and get the answer thank you have a great day